in this question we're now going to look at a moment's question where the plank or the beam or the rod is non-uniform. In other words, the centre of mass is not in the, in the centre of the beam or the rod or the plank. So, it says two masses A and B are placed on a non-uniform plank. Notice it's clearly stated non-uniform plank CD. So we've got CD. The plank is 6 metres long, so we know it's 6 metres long. And the weight of the plank is 100 newtons. Now we don't know where that is yet and it's pivoted at M, the midpoint at CD. So we've got a pivot at M, which is in the midpoint. Now at the pivot, there'll be a normal reaction, and that'll be three meters from each end of the uh, plank. Now, it says the center of mass of the plank CD is at the point E, where DE is two meters. Now D's here, so we're gonna come in two meters, and that's then where the center of mass is going to be for the plank, and that's called E. And that's going to have, uh, it says it's got a weight, the plank had a weight of 100 newtons. So that means that 100 newtons will be acting downwards at E, which is two meters from D. And that means that will leave a meter to the pivot M, uh, uh, sorry, the pivot at M. Um, okay, so um, it then says, um, the mass A is 25 kilograms and placed at C. So we've got a mass here at C. It's got a mass of 25 kilograms. That means it's gonna have a weight of 25 G. And 25 G, whenever we work that out, will be 25 times by 9.8, which is equal to, um, equal to 245 Newtons. Okay. Um, now, it says there's a mass B, which is 40 kilograms, and we need to find where that's going to be so that the plank remains horizontal, okay? In other words, it's in equilibrium over the, uh, the pivot and it's laying horizontal. So, just looking at this diagram and the forces that are on it so far, we've got the pivot in the center, it's a normal reaction, and then we've got uh, two, um, we've got the weight of the beam, which is 100 newtons, and then a mass placed at the very end of the beam, uh, which has a weight of 245 newtons. Now that's going to, if, if this was as it was, um, this beam would fall down on the left-hand side, it would go down and here. Um, you can see that would happen because obviously this force is very large and it's a large distance from the pivot, three meters compared to this one meter, and so the beam would just go down. So to balance things out, I know that the mass B is going to be over here on the right-hand side, and it's got a mass of 40 kilograms, so its weight's going to be 40 G. And 40 G, 40 times by 9.8, equals 300 equals 392 newtons. Now, if I, for some strange reason, have misinterpreted this and the, and the um, mass B was on the other side, it would just mean that whenever we work out a value for X, it may be a negative from wherever we're considering it from, and we would just need to sort of reevaluate the position, but it, it makes sense it's gonna be over on the right-hand side here. Now, it may not be on the right hand side of it, it might be a bit closer to the mid uh, to the midpoint or where the pivot is, but we'll find that out very clear, um, you know, very soon. Okay, so this is our diagram. We've got our mass at C, our mass at um, you know where we're trying to find out. We've got our um, center of mass for the plank at E, and uh, we've got our pivot normal direction at M. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to let's just mark on some of the distances. So we know that's three meters from the midpoint to, and let's do these in blue so we know that we're talking about distances here. Uh, so we know it's going to be three meters from C to the midpoint. Because E was two meters from D, that's going to mean one meter there and it would be two meters there. And this. Um, object, this mass B, um, what we need to do is we need to consider where we're going to take moments about. And once we decide where we're going to take moments about, I'm then going to label that in as X. And then I can work out that distance from the point I'm going to take moments about. Okay. Um, before I do that, I've just noticed that I've got the weight here. I've got the weight here, I've got the weight here, but I don't have the normal reaction. And although whenever I do this question, I'm not gonna to need to know the normal reaction, you're gonna see that, um, you know, like that um, I'm gonna take moments about here. Um, I'm just gonna work it out anyway, okay? So the forces up will equal the forces down. So the forces up are R, and the forces down are my 245 plus my 100 plus my 392. So there are all my forces downwards. So R would be equal to 245 plus 100 plus 392, which is equal to 737 newtons. So R equals 737 newtons, 737.
Now, the reason I've worked that out is that if you've decided to take moments about, I'm going to take moments about M, but if you take moments about C, you could use that number. Um, or if you take moments about E, again, you can take that uh, number. Or if you take moments about D, you can use that number. And that means that, you know, just as a show you that you don't necessarily have to take moments about the midpoint like I am. Okay, so um, let's consider where we're going to take moments about and why. I'm going to take moments about this midpoint um, here, the pivot. The reason is I know the distance to the weight at C for this object, and that's going to be 3 meters, and I know what I'm going to multiply by, so that's straightforward. I know the distance to E is 1 meter, and I know the force is 100 newtons, so I can just time them together again. And what I could do is I could just label in this distance, and I'm actually going to do that now. Um, I can label in the distance from the midpoint of the plank M to the um, mass at B, which we're trying to find out this position, and let's call it X. So then we could just times X by 392, and we know all those values. So it means that I wouldn't need to know the normal reaction because obviously the distance is zero times by the force would give me no turn in effect. So I could just ignore that normal reaction. Now, alternatively, if you had chosen C to take moments about, again, you could just use three times this 737, which we worked out very simply. We could do four times by the 100 um, newtons, and then you could just call the distance from CX and then times that by 392. Just remember that the value for X will be from the point that you're taking the moments about. Anyway, let's take moments about um, M. So moments about M. So remember, clockwise moments equal anti-clockwise moments. So clockwise moments, let's just consider which way each one's going. So the one at C, well, it's going to be going around this way, so that's going to be anti-clockwise. E is, well, if you're at M, it's going to be here going around clockwise. And the one at B, again, it's going to be going around clockwise. So the clockwise moments, so the one at E, 1 meter times by 100 newtons. And then the one at B, well, X is the distance we're trying to work out times by, well at B it had a mass of 40, so that's a weight of 40 G, which was 392. And that equals from M, the anti-clockwise moments, well that's going to be the um, weight of the particle A, or particle A, which is at C, and that's going to be 3 meters times by the weight, which is 245. So let's work this out. So we've got 100 plus 392 X equals and then 3 times 245 equals 735. Take 100 off both sides so you get 392x equals um, that gives us 635 and dividing 635 by 392 gives us that x is equal to 1.62 um, meters to two decimal places. Um, so Let's consider, first of all, it's positive. So that means that we have got it on the right side, okay? That it is uh, 1.62 meters to the right of the midpoint. If you, for some strange, some strange reason, got a negative, it would have meant that the object of uh, mass of B would have, or the object of B would have been on the other side. Um, now, 1.62, let's consider where that means, uh, let's consider that in relation to the diagram. Well, it's one meter to E, so it's an extra 62 centimeters. And so, yeah, it hasn't reached as far as D, and so our diagram was pretty good in the first place. So then you would just write a sentence that says, "Where does uh, where must B be placed?" And um, you could say, you know, like, um, you know, one point six two meters to the right of the midpoint. You could even say four. You could add the three on and you could say four point six two meters from C, or you could even work out the distance from D. But you would sort of write a sentence to summarize that. 